Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I like to think about business intelligence for startups. And I'm going to be using Tinder as my example. I want you to imagine you join Tinder as the head of analytics, and your job now is to help the company be, become data driven. Try and think what would your approach be? I'm going to share with you the approach I would take, and then you're more than welcome to use it for your own companies. So the first thing I like to look at is the high level information about the company. So with Tinder, we all know it's a mobile uh, only company. Well, actually, I noticed they have a, a website now, but you know, for most of its history, it's been mobile only. We know it's B2C. And we also know it's a product focused company. What I mean by that is it doesn't have a big sales team. Since it's B2C, it's working directly with consumers. Um, they don't do a huge amount of marketing. It's mainly around word of mouth. Um, and the product is very much what drives the business. We also know it's a global company and that they use a freemium model. So anyone can sign up, doesn't cost anything to use it. And then the goal is that a percentage of those users ultimately upgrade to um, a premium plan. So once we've kind of understand the very high level, what we're dealing with, you know, mobile, a, main, a mainly mobile company, B2C, et cetera, the next thing I like to do is try to really understand the main, um, what I call the engine of the company. So I like to think of the company in terms of an engine. We have inputs and outputs and, you know, an engine in the end has one main purpose, which is to produce or, or do something. So we need to understand the company's main goals and then break that down in a very, very logical, sequential way. Um, another way to think about this approach is to develop the main funnel of the company. So if we think of Tinder's machine or main funnel, it goes like this. A user will sign up mostly through word of mouth. They've admitted this themselves, very viral type of uh, tool. A user then will update their, their profile and kind of set up their, their account. The user will start swiping. Hopefully the user will match with someone. That very much is the wow moment. That's gonna create then a loop because it's very much a positive feedback loop, you know, almost to the point where you can get addicted to it. And you're gonna continue to use Tinder since you're getting that positive reinforcement. And at a certain point, you're gonna move over and become a premium user and start paying and the company makes money. And this is very much a numbers game for the company, right? You can have a large number entering the, the top of the funnel over here. And then at the bottom, you're going to have a very small percentage, which will convert. But since the funnel is so big, this is going to end up being a lot of money. At least that's the, that's the model. So once you've mapped this out, the next thing we need to understand is what is the main drivers of the engine? What I mean by that is what are the main um, metrics or aspects that for each of the steps in the funnel are going to be able to move, move the numbers around. So if we think about user sign up, we're talking about growth, right? The more individuals being exposed to the company, downloading the apps, etc., will result in more users signing up. After that, you know, we're talking about activation like the percentage of users over here that end up updating and activating their accounts essentially. And after that, you know, which is very common, we're talking about usage, right? This is gonna be, you can measure this in many different ways, right? We have users start swiping. So we're interested in, you know, the percentage of users which end up getting to this point from the beginning of the funnel. Um, and then obviously we're talking about retention. Right, our users coming back and using the, the app over and over again and getting that positive reinforcement so that then after a certain point, they're going to convert and become a premium user. So once we kind of understand the main drivers, the next thing we can do is actually understand what are the KPIs I need to track and optimize to improve the drivers of the engine. So this is very much, you know, like a top down hierarchical, hierarchical model, which you can use for any business, right? Starting with the funnel, move down to the drivers, and then the next is we talk about KPIs, 
right? So we're talking about growth now. You know, brand mentions is going to probably affect growth. We're talking about downloads of the app, activation. You know, the percentage that complete the profile. Um, so you know that's going to be a KPI we we'll want to keep an eye on. Usage, you know, as I said, usage is a big one. We have usage of individual features. You have high level retention, which can be looked at in different ways. Cohorts, um, you know, daily active users, and then also just general, you know, adoption. Did the user swipe at least once? Did you get to that point so you could experience the tool uh, and how it works? And then lastly is conversion, right? And conversion also, you know, it's, it might sound simple, you know, from a high level, but you can look at awareness. Are the users actually aware that there's a premium offering? You know, do they see the pricing and the benefits and so on? And then obviously just the high level KPI, uh, free to pay percentage, um, you know, make sure that's, you know, steady and hopefully growing because you improve that since the funnel um, is big, it's going to result in a lot of money. So now that we've got the KPIs, the next thing you'll want to do is actually do a bit of a gap analysis. You'd want to create a table, some kind of diagram where you can map out the different KPIs. And once again, this is all from a very high level, right? We're not talking about individual features necessarily. Um, you can get very, very granular very quickly, but we have to start from a high level and make sure we have that covered. So we're going to do our gap analysis and you can make this table as complicated as you want, um, depending on your company and the different tools and systems you use and might need to be quite complicated. Um, but basically you want to map out the KPIs, talk about the sources of the data that's relating to the KPIs. Um, and if you're not even, maybe you don't even have the so a source of data for the KPI, then, you know, that's definitely going to help you understand if, you know, can we track or not. And once you kind of have a general idea of the state of the, the data, you know, like, are we, was the company data driven from day one and things are in a good, good position, then it's, you know, it's going to make your life much, much easier. And then lastly, now you can actually get down to drawing up your BI plan. Um, you know, and this is going to have basically these eight main parts. You're going to talk about your goals. So you'll sit with your manager, most likely the COO or CEO, um, CTO and decide for very, very like high level goals, you know, a year long plan, two year long plan, what you want to do in terms of setting up business intelligence in the company. Next, you're going to talk about your BI stack. Um, actually, there's no specific order for this. Um, so I'm just going to go through each of these BI stack. You basically want to decide on the, the te technological stack that would make the most sense for your business. For Tinder, you know, I would probably go with, um, you know, uh, if they're using something like Firebase for app development and analytics, then I would go with that. I would go with uh, Google BigQuery for my data warehouse, and then most likely something like Tableau for data visualization. Um, so that would be my BI stack, but it obviously changed depending on certain factors like budget, um, the tools you already have, um, even, you know, your geography and the types of tools which are popular in your market might affect that. Next, you're going to do a very detailed data audit. And I actually have a blog post that covers this. I'll link to it below. Um, part of that data uh, audit will help you build a very, very detailed gap analysis. So you, can't, you kind of started it over here. But once you've done the high level, you'll want to do a more detailed one. Um, and that will be a result of the data audit. Next, you want to understand the list of consumers in the organization. Um, you know, are you treating, you know, as part of your goals, will you be, will you be serving the product, the marketing, business development, C-level? Who exactly in the organization will you be responsible for looking after in terms of data? You'll have to cover the team, you know, depending on the size of the organization, the complexity and, you know, the, the company structure. Uh, you might want to manage both the data engineering side and the business analyst, uh, analyst side. Um, you'll have to decide what makes the most sense. Um, and also, depending on your goals and you know budget constraints, like which kind of analysts will you want to hire first, uh, depending on who you want to, who the consumers are. That also ties very much into prioritization, right? Like some 
most startups don't have a huge budget for operations, uh, at least not initially. So you have to prioritize and you know set the right expectations with the different consumers. Um, in my previous company, you know we served the marketing and sales before we served the product and customer success. Um, and that was just because of prioritization and certain limits on on budget. And then lastly is you know new processes. So you know if the company's goal is to become data driven, you'll need to come up with certain processes which um, make sense for the business. Uh, you know certain approaches to require requesting data, um, different you know weekly and monthly syncs of the leadership. Uh, etc. You know, where the team will be located in the organization, are they all going to be under the same umbrella? Or does each department have their own analyst? Um, that all comes under the processes, uh, processes section. So that's it. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, and you want to see others, then please subscribe and support the channel. Thank you.